Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to teach you how to create bloody text on a wall in Photoshop. Now some of the assumptions that I'm making right off the bat is that I'm using Photoshop CC 2015. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop then some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I'm using Windows, so if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key on your keyboard, and when I say hit the alt key, that means hit the option key. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started by hitting control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. Let's name this bloody text because that's what we're making. And let's look at the options. Our width will be 3840 pixels. Our height will be 2160 pixels. Our resolution is 150 pixels per inch. Our color mode is RGB color 8 bit. Background is going to be black, so make sure that this is black. Uh, color pro profile is Adobe RGB 1998. And pixel aspect ratio is square pixels. Now that we've got our image ready to go, let's start by pulling in two images that will comprise our background. Now I'm leaving a link in the description below on where you can download these backgrounds that I'm using in this tutorial. I'll also leave a link down there for the font that I'm using, which is called Homicide Effect. So the two images that I am using are going to be a splatter and a bloody wall, which I will now drag in one at a time. First, the bloody wall look. Okay? Now here it is. Uh, I'm not going to make any changes to it. I'm just going to hit OK. And here it is now resizable in my image. So I'm going to make my uh, mouse up in the upper right hand corner and then holding down Shift and Alt on the keyboard, I can then click and drag out and it will keep it all uh, uniform in size. So there we go, it fills my entire screen. I can then hit enter on my keyboard to accept the transformation and we now have our bloody wall. The next one that I'm going to drag in from uh, from one of my folders is the splatter. So I'm going to drag that to the center here and that's going to come up like this. We're going to hit OK and then I'm going to resize it just as I did before. Shift and Alt and then drag a corner and make it nice and big. Hit Enter and there we go. Now the thing that you have to do with the splatter wall is you got to change the layer mode to multiply. And now we have our bloody wall. That's all that we really need for the bloody wall but we're going to add in a little bit of curves adjustments on three separate curve adjustment layers in order to make this look better for the text. So the first thing that we're going to do, like I said, is go down here on the bottom of our layers palette where we have our uh, adjustment layers. We're going to click there and we're going to go to curves. Now this first curve, all we're going to do is go up here to preset and we're going to change our preset to strong contrast, which is this one right down here at the bottom. Do that and it gets a little bloodier and darker. That's all we have to do with that curves. Then we're going to do another curves. So let's click and click on curves again. And this one is going to give us our feather where we're going to put our text on this wall. So we want to grab the upper right hand handlebar here and drag this down to about the bottom most black line. Then we want to click here under properties on the mask and we want to change the feather to 175. Okay, and that is all that we have to do there. Now, making sure that we are on the layer mask for the curves too, we are then going to go to our elliptical marquee which you can click on and then drag to the right and then get to the elliptical marquee or you can hit uh, control M Oh, I'm sorry. Or you can hit uh, Shift M to switch between the elliptical and the rectangular marquee. So make sure that you are on elliptical marquee and it is the first one which is a new and you want feather to be zero, you want anti-alias to be checked and style to be normal. We are then making sure again that we are on our mask for curves too. We are then going to make an elliptical selection roughly this big. We are then going to move that until it clicks to the center of our document like so. Let go and then we are going to fill that with black. So hit Alt and Backspace on your keyboard to fill it with black to hide that and that will expose our two 
uh, bloody wall layers beneath, and that is where our text will go. We now have one last curves adjustment to make above curves number two. So let's go down and do another curves adjustment layer. And then what we are going to do is we're going to use preset increase contrast, which is the fourth one down. Do increase contrast, then you are done. And we have a nice bloody area of a wall to put our text. We're then going to select all of our layers, except for our background layer, which we don't really need. Uh, we are going to select from Curse 3, click on that, and then hold down Shift, and then click on Bloody Wall. And then we're going to hit Control G on the keyboard to group them, and then we're going to name that Background, because that is our background. Next up, we are going to add in our text. So hit T on the keyboard to bring up the text tool, or you can click on the text tool over here on your tools palette. Let's make sure that we are using Homicide Effect. Again, I have a link to this font in the description below, but any drippy font should work perfectly well. Uh, I am using a size of 310 points, uh, sharp, centered, and the color that we're using needs to be a different color. So let's click over here to change our color, and let's change the color to A, Eight zero nine zero nine, which is a nice blood red. Hit OK, and we now have our red text ready to go. Click anywhere in the center, and we are going to do our words, which I am going to once again use Pixel Magic. We will then change the kerning or the spacing between the letters. I do this every time that I'm doing uh, any kind of uh, effects with fonts because the fonts that you have usually have weird spacing between the letters. Now before we actually do that, let's click off here because I want this to be all caps. And the way that you can do that quickly after typing it in is you go up here to character and down here you change it from uh, nothing, like it could be nothing like that, or you can just change it to right here, which is all caps. Everything is all caps. But we're going to turn it off for this one so that we get this nice bloody P-I-X-E-L, and it's all roughly the same size, and it looks like it was drawn in blood. So you don't want anything there, and uh, I'm using upper and lowercase lettering. So my P and my M are uppercase, and everything else is lowercase in this font. So. We now have that, and what we want to do is we want to change the kerning between, because the spacing between the P and the I is very large, but the I and the X is very close. And we want to make them much, much closer, because it's got to look like somebody hand wrote this with bloody fingers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this, so oh, that G needs to be real close. There we go. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. Let's make this a just a wee bit closer. And we now have our text. So now let hit, let's hit the check mark up here. Let's go back to our move tool by hitting V on the keyboard or clicking on the move tool in the tool palette. And let's click and drag this until it is roughly about here over our background blood. Now, the entire effect of this bloody text is done by using a drippy font and then by applying a layer style. So let's create that layer style now. We're gonna go down to our layer styles, we're gonna to go to bevel and emboss, and we are then going to start applying our layer style. Uh, the style that we're using for bevel and emboss is gonna be inner bevel, smooth, it's gonna be a depth of 350, direction is up, size is 55, soften is 16. Now for the angle, make sure you uncheck use global light, then we want to make it 115 degrees by 30 degrees. The gloss contour is going to be this double ring right here. Uh, double ring, there you go. Anti-alias is checked. Highlight is linear dodge add at 80% and it is white. Uh, shadow mode is overlay, it is black at 90%. Next up we're going to add a contour to the bevel and emboss and the contour that we're using is going to be uh, rounded steps right here. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked and the range is going to be 65. Texture, we're going to add a little bit of texture. Now the pattern that we're using can be found under uh, Texture Fill 2. So if you don't see it, what you do is you click on this little arrow, then you click on the little sprocket, and then you go down here to Texture Fill 2. You click on that, you hit OK, and then what you're looking for is this guy right here, which says Styrofoam 200 by 200 pixels. 
then we're going to make the scale 100%, and the depth is going to be negative 2. Invert is unchecked, link width layer is checked. Next up, we are going to uh, do a stroke. So we're going to hit stroke. The size of our stroke is going to be 16. Position is going to be center. Blend mode is linear dodge add. Opacity is going to be 100%, and overprint is checked. We're then going to go to uh, the fill type here of gradient. Now the gradient is a little special. We're going to click on the gradient itself so that we bring up the gradient editor. And then we are going to do the following. Up here on the upper left, we are going to change that opacity to 30%. On the upper right, we're going to change the opacity slider to 20%. Then we're going to make the bottom color here. Uh, is going to be a deep red, which is 310E04, to make it a very deep red. And all the way here on the right, the color that we're using is going to be a nicer red, a little lighter red, I should say, of 620404. And that is our gradient. So hit OK and OK. And then we're going to make sure reverse is unchecked. Align with layer is checked. It's going to be a linear uh, style. Angle is going to be straight 90 degrees. Dither is unchecked, scale is going to be 100%. Next up, we're going to give it an inner shadow, and we're going to make that blend mode linear burn. The color that we're using is pure black, so all zeros. Opacity will be 40%. The angle is going to be negative 135, and make sure, again, that use global light is unchecked. Distance will be 13. Choke will be zero. Size will be 32. The contour is going to be linear, which is the default. Uh, Anti-alias is unchecked and noise is zero. After inner shadow, uh, we're going to do an inner glow. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this a blend mode of vivid light. Opacity is going to be 34%. Our noise will be zero. And the color that we're using is a very light, light, light red, almost pink. Uh, FFE6E6. Hit OK, and you now have your color. Technique is softer. Source is the edge. Choke is going to be zero. Size is 20. Contour, again, is the default linear. Anti-alias is unchecked. Range is 50, and jitter is zero. Next up is a color overlay. So click on color overlay, and we're going to make the blend mode is color, and the color is going to be a bloody red of 5B0000. Hit OK, and the opacity is going to be only 85%. We are then going to do our last bit, which is going to be an outer glow. So we are then going to make it a blend mode of normal. Opacity will be 30. Noise is 10. The color is a deeper red, which is 541705. Hit OK. And then we're going to go of a technique of softer, a spread of 0, a size of 16. Contour is the default linear. Anti-alias is checked. Range is 100%. Jitter is 50%. And that gives us our bloody text on a bloody wall background. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I create new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.